potentially focus on. I don't recommend doing them both at the same time, uh, but it, it gives people some choice. Um, the first one was uh, because some people have been talking about uh, breathing uh, and how that works in meditation. Um, so one practice that I've been taught uh, that I, I find really useful for trying to relax a little bit and let go of tension, which is a big problem for me and I suspect for others as well, um, is generally in meditation from whatever school you're, you're uh, talking about, you're trying to breathe from sort of down below your belly button rather than the shallow sort of more panting breath uh, from the, the chest. Um, and you're not trying to breathe so deeply that you're, <gasps> excuse me, uh, really trying to sort of gasp it in or breathe out so much uh, until you've got nothing left. Uh, you want the breathing to be natural. Uh, but oftentimes I find when I'm stressed, things tighten up, uh, the breathing gets shallower, uh, it doesn't feel like I have as much capacity. Uh, and so one thing to try, if this is an issue for you, um, is to take a, a breath in. And you can even put, uh, I'm not sure if you can see or if it's helpful, um, you can even put your uh, hand, put a hand about an inch or two below your belly button. Uh, for those of you who are singers, of course, right, breathing from the diaphragm, it's all the same idea uh, in a lot of different activities. Uh, and so when you breathe in, you can sort of push that out a little bit. And then when you're ready to breathe out, you breathe out uh, for a little bit and then hold it. Again, try three times and then the rest go. And then breathe in again. Nice deep breath. So maybe two times and then the rest go or however many times uh, you want. Um, and the goal is not to, you know, and again, tighten up around the breath. Uh, but if you try this, uh, what you might find is as you let the breath out in stages, you'll feel your shoulders relax, you'll feel your neck relax a little bit more. And then at that final breath, breathing it all out, uh, that's when uh, hopefully uh, your body relaxes a little bit more. Also, uh, when you breathe out, you don't want to end up hunched over because then it's harder to breathe in. Uh, there's always a balance between uh, focusing on breath, posture, thoughts, um, but this is something to try uh, and see if it works. And if there are questions about that, I, I can try and answer them. Um, the second, um, again, comes from the Buddhist tradition because that's what I'm most familiar with, uh, but it also seems to respond to sort of uh, where the season is. Um, some of you may be familiar with the flower sermon uh, in Mahayana Buddhism, uh, towards the end of his life, uh, the Buddha uh, gathered his disciples together for a sermon, but instead of speaking, uh, he simply reached into a pond, pulled out a lotus flower. Uh, so lotus, big, beautiful flower, uh, roots dripping mud, because it's a water plant, and walked around showing it to the disciples, and they were all like, huh, what's with the flower? Uh, one Maha uh, Kyaspa uh, laughed, and the Buddha, uh, by his uh, words, um, sort of designated uh, Mahakyaspa as his successor, meaning he gets it. Um, and there's a lot said in Zen Buddhism about uh, transmission wisdom that goes beyond words. Uh, so we'll push the Buddhism aspect aside, um, but I've got a, a flower here. It's not a lotus, uh, so I don't have any handy. But this is a season of spring, of renewal, of uh, new life. Um, and so I offer up the flower as a focus for meditation. I'll pull the camera down. I have to sort of trap it under the tablet. Uh, otherwise, it will fly away. Um, but if you want something to focus on, uh, what is the flower? What does it signify to you? Uh, you can go in any number of directions there based on uh, your own understanding, your, your own faith, uh, but you can use this 
uh, as a visual. Right here it is. It's actually a couple flowers, a couple leaves, and a stem. Uh, it can be whatever it is, or it can be a symbol of something, of hope, of renewal. Um, so I leave that to you to choose. Um, and in a second, when we start it again, I'll pull the camera down uh, so that you can look at the flower. Uh, any questions or, or comments before we start? So if not, uh, we can get right into it. Um, I'll start in a second. Uh, when you hear the Big Ben ding dong, uh, we'll be at 15 minutes um, and we'll have a little bit of time for, for questions and answers afterwards. So here we go. Can somebody just tell me that I've, I've got it centered right? Uh, is the camera on the flower now? Can people see it? Uh, can somebody give me an audio? Yeah, I can see it. I can see okay. it. Jim. Is it it's centered? Yeah. All right, let's begin.
comments, observations? Um, it's getting like easier and easier for me to do this now. I don't know why. I guess I feel like a little stronger each time. So mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, and, um, go ahead. No, I was going to say I started doing some breathing exercises at night. I'm actually not in Brooklyn. I'm in uh, the Virgin Islands because my husband works here. So at night, the stars are like twinkling. So we go outside on the balcony mm -hmm. and on, on the like pool mats. <laughs> we just do like a little breathing at the end of the day. Mm -hmm for both of us so that was a helpful tip to kind of learn how to breathe because you tend to have it all up here like you said so I thought that mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. I mean I think like anything else uh, it does get easier with practice and even though we all know how to breathe uh, from the moment we're born that doesn't mean we're breathing in a suitable or an optimal way uh, that sounds like a wonderful practice yeah Other comments or questions? I had a, um, I have a hyacinth fly, uh, flower here. So I was mm -hmm. um, focusing on the flower I had here and I was really drawn into the details of each flower um, blossom. Mm -hmm. and I just kept like looking for more, looking for more. Okay. Within uh, the blossoms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, if you can tell us what was the effect that it had on you, if any, or if you can tell a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I just, I kept, I just kept becoming more aware of these beautiful details within each flower and the i was foc i was trying to focus on one um blossom in particular mm -hmm. and you know i saw the lines and i saw uh, you know there's like shades of color you know within each blossom and um just how the whole thing is connected to the whole entire flower plant uh -huh. connection mm -hmm what I was, I guess, the theme. Okay. The small, everything, every, every little bit is connected to the whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sort of like the, the poem from Blake, uh, to see the universe in a grain of sand, an eternity in an hour. Mm. Yeah. I had another comment, if that's okay. Of course, of course. So when I first started learning about mindfulness, I went to um, Smith College and I spent a whole summer there learning about it. And one of the things I appreciate about our sessions is that there's a, such a scholarly component because oftentimes like you hear about mindfulness and it's such a pop culture version and there's always talk about reducing anxiety. And I used to think that that's why I wanted to learn it and then I realized that, that that's actually not really why I want it. I want to sort of understand a different kind of consciousness so i don't want to do mindfulness to reduce anxiety i just was i think i just was born with anxiety i mean it but so, i don't know I, I feel like you've never mentioned that and i really appreciate that that it's, it's you never talk about anxiety or stress because i think that simplifies so much of what we do so mm -hmm. um i think there, there are a couple good things in there one, sort of, we all approach this idea of mindfulness or this idea of meditation, you know, from our own intellectual, personal background. Uh, you know, we're entering at different points. We're trying to figure out how it makes sense to us. And I think that is a good thing, that it should make sense to us rather than this is how you're supposed to think about it. Uh, that's a trap that's, that's talked about, uh, at least in Buddhism and I'm sure in, in other uh aspects of mindfulness as well. Um, but the other thing that you were saying that, that uh, caught for me um, was, and now I lost my train of thought, uh, the last part of what you were saying. Um, um, that it was, that I wasn't really 
but I was looking for a different kind of consciousness versus mm -hmm. just reducing anxiety. Reducing anxiety, sure. Uh huh. Um, you know, uh, I think there again, um, there are different kind of traps or uh, different uh, challenges uh, that arise. You know, if you're trying really hard to reduce your anxiety, maybe it's not going to work so much. Um, but if you're focusing on something, whether it's just the details of the flower, uh, or you're thinking about the uh, intellectual composition of mindfulness, it, it pulls you outside yourself. And maybe reducing anxiety is, is one of the benefits. Um, you know, but I think there again, uh, we also get to choose sort of what are the goals that we're actually actively pursuing. Um, and I think as we pursue them, we, we may also notice that we've, we've gotten other things out of it that maybe we weren't expecting uh, or uh, maybe weren't focusing on, but they're, they're, they're just the same. Yeah, and I feel like for me, reducing anxiety, seem, what seems to be working is perspective like gaining a different perspective. And I think Liz did that for me last week when she just shared that little, you know, beautiful little quote. But yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like it's the perspective that that helps with that, so. But. Okay, uh -huh. anybody else want to comment on uh, what Marina was saying or offer something of their own? Yeah, I think I think you're right, Marina. I think the perspective also helps when we do these. Because um, for me, it's be, you know, not to overuse that terminology, but being in that present moment, which it's a very Buddhist idea, but I think it's also um, a very Christian um, perspective as well as other religious traditions and being in that moment. I was having a really hard time, I'll be honest with you, focusing on the flower that Jim had, but I have this beautiful backyard and garden that I could look out at. And one of the things that I was looking at while we were meditating was the damn squirrels have chewed off my tulip bulbs. So I was, you know, talk about perspective. I was really annoyed because I love seeing my tulips, mm -hmm. but what it did was then it kind of moved me to looking at the the tulip petals that were on the ground next to the so there's a magnolia tree also that is beautiful but mm. because of the storm we had the other day all the blossoms blew off onto the deck and now they're starting yeah. to shrivel and brown but i thought they you know in a sense i was kind of looking at all that and looking at sort of beginning where you started jim was the idea of spring and new life but in order for new life to happen for, you know, new life happens, but those buds of those flowers and the trees, they die so mm -hmm. that new life can happen. So we focus on that present moment of the beauty of it, forgetting that there's greater beauty coming behind it um, in a different form. That's mm -hmm. kind of the crazy train of thought that I went off on. <laughs> Not crazy at all. I uh, got something from my first teacher as well. Uh, he and his wife were, were both uh, Buddhist priests and one spring uh, they were uh, living in a brownstone in Fort Greene and there was a late snow. Um, and uh, his wife looked out and saw just piles of snow in their garden and said, well, there go the daffodils. Uh, and uh, he replied, mm, but the snow is beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? I just had a quick question. Who was the, you quoted someone um, after my comment. Oh, uh, yeah, if people are interested, they can uh, look up the Flower Sermon, which is different from the Flower Sutra in Buddhism, uh, but it's a uh, story uh, told on the Mahayana side of things about the Buddha, instead of presenting a sermon with words, you know, intellectual concepts, just uh, pulling a flower out by its roots and showing it to people. Um, and in the Zen tradition, 
uh, it's seen as the origin of the idea that you can sort of get enlightenment or get wisdom or understand something beyond words. Thank right? you. Just seeing the flower allowed one of his disciples to just sort of have that aha moment. And he, he laughed and the Buddha said, you know, basically this guy gets it. Uh, and there's lots of commentary on that. Um, you know, what does it mean for Zen? What does it mean for other aspects of Buddhism? Uh, but it was uh, something that I seized on uh, given the season. And of course, there are many ways you can look at flowers. Speaking of the flowers, that reminds me of something that I had learned, and that was, what, what is the flower? And it goes back to what we're talking about when you look at the flower, where you're looking at the, the, the leaves, the petals, the stamen, all of those pieces of the flower. So what is the flower? And you see that it isn't a flower unless all of those pieces come together and integrate, which was always so meaningful to me because it means that we all have to come together in order to reach our full potential. So when we were talking about looking at that hyacinth flower and the shades of purple, that's so true. And it rings that ring. Well, I guess it really rang true with me. That's, I just mm -hmm. wanted to share that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I think we've gotten a lot of wonderful feedback. Um, perhaps we should stop there. So uh, on my end, I can, I can send out a, a link to a uh, text of the flower sermon uh, for those who are interested. And if anybody else has uh, any uh, text or sources to share um, that came up uh, on their end, uh, maybe we can add that to the conversation as well. That would be great. <laughs> all right. Thank well, you again, Thank you. Oh, thank you all. Uh -huh. Thank uh, you. See you next for those week. who are, yes, uh, be safe. Take care till then. Uh, for those of us in the sunshine, enjoy it. Um, and uh, have a good rest of the week.